that this television can now give you the full TV guide. Yeah? The full t access to the full TV guide. Not just one channel, the full TV guide. So this could be in a kid's bedroom, and the kid could use the television with no aerial and get the full functionality of the television with it. One other addition with, the, with this uh, HBB TV is this television will now also support the red button feature. So all the sort of uh, information that comes within the television, the red button feature in here. So as well as a, the TV guide, you also get the red button controls from it as well. And this also allows the television, this television, to stream to a mobile device. So it could be, for instance, your uh, laptop or your mobile phone, and you could be elsewhere in the country, or perhaps on the train, wanting to watch the, the latest programme. You can access this to your tablet using internet protocol. You can also, if you have something recorded into a USB hard drive in the television, drag the recording down to your mobile device also. But the main that platform for this, I think, is the ability to put a TV elsewhere in the house without having, um, without having any aerials in it. Yeah? So a nice feature, only available in Europe, unfortunately. In, in Scotland, where I'm from, we don't have this feature. It's a European feature. It's nothing to do with Brexit, but we don't have it in the, we don't have it in the, uh, in the UK. This would be very good for me. I would, I would appreciate this, uh, this feature. Control 4 is a way of integrating a number of products into one system. So you could use a laptop at home and it would control your television, perhaps your lighting, perhaps your blinds, your heating, whatever, all via Control 4. Um, and we'll just demonstrate here. We also have here an Alexa speaker, and this Alexa speaker is also connected to Control 4. So this year we introduced this. Of course, some of our competitors have this, and it seems to be a feature that's, that's well in demand, in demand. So we have it this year. So in sports mode, we also introduce a new picture button to the, the handset. So I uh, press the, the picture button, and we have here normal, and we can add it to sport mode. And you see it increases the brightness from it. Yeah. Now one thing Panasonic do here, some manufacturers who have this feature enhance the colors. They make the reds very red, they enhance the greens, and you get a very unnatural color with it. At Panasonic, what we've tried to do here is increase the brightness but maintain colour, so that the customer gets the impression that they're actually in a cinema with the, the, the floodlights on, or the, the sunlight coming through on it. Also, as well as changing the picture from it, it will also put the TV in surround sound mode. Yeah? That's it. And back to normal. So, into sport mode. Brighter and a wider sound gamut, a wider sound from it, yeah? So this is sport mode. What we have here is last year's uh, OLED product. Of course, last year we showed our OLED against our competitor's OLED to show the difference in the Panasonic OLED. And Panasonic's strength in OLED was that in that area just above black, which is very difficult to get the detail on, Panasonic performed very well in the subtle shadow areas to highlight the detail within black. It's very difficult for a TV at that area just above black. In fact, the Kalman uh, calibration has added two more steps of calibration into the dark areas to further improve that. But this is a panel from last year, phenomenal panel showing the black level. And of course, if you're looking at this one here, then there's not a lot of difference. Yeah, there's not a lot of difference. We maintain the black level. This is the latest generation OLED panel that Panasonic are using, but we want to show that we're still keeping that black level. Of course, what we've done to the panel this year is increase our processing capability with it. Yeah? So at black level, not a huge amount of change because we are very, very good at black level on Panasonic OLED. But this year, with our HCX processing, we have... Oh, we have here the so last year's panel this year's panel just observe perhaps in this panel here the finer detail in the picture in bright scenes particularly in the sand yeah and so on 
This is the new panel. So the panels are this, uh, panels haven't changed too much, although this is the latest panel. What has changed is Panasonic processing. It's more powerful, more accurate, particularly in the highly high illumination areas here. Yeah. So I think you'll notice here this panel performing very well, partic yeah, particularly in the in the, the text down here. Yeah, and the grass and so on. Just gives more detail in the brightness. So the, av the peak brightness of the panels haven't changed, but the average brightness has improved on it. And we can control with that average brightness to give more detail, more accuracy from, for the panel. And of course, the key word for Panasonic is accuracy. Yeah, our picture is extremely accurate. It's a very lifelike picture with it. And of course, these panels are THX certified. So they meet the criteria for THX. Still, only Panasonic achieves the THX classification because our pictures are accurate. Perhaps some brands don't have THX because their picture quality is not as accurate as what ours is. Yeah? But I think you quite clearly see the improved processing on this product compared to the last year's model. And let's not forget, last year's was a superb product. Yeah? So this is down to the HCX processing within the panel. So extremely accurate, true to the fil film maker's vision. And at Panasonic, we're continuing to deliver the best of OLED pictures to the, the consumer. Do you see a difference? Yeah? I think it's quite clear. I think it's a, 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 a clear uh, observation. Okay, between uh, HDR10 and HDR10+. Plus. So this one here is HDR10. And here we have HDR10 plus dynamic metadata. So previously, the television would receive one set of instructions in terms of its luminance and its uh, black level and its color level. And it would continue that all the way through the film. With the dynamic metadata, it's frame by frame accurate on it. So the television can adjust for every single uh, scene uh, it comes across the television. This is the benefit of HDR10+, Plus, is to get that dynamic metadata, more accurate picture to the consumer. That's why Panasonic have chosen to go down this route here. And here, again, I think you can clearly see the finer detail uh, with HDR10+, Plus on Panasonic product. Remember, we have this from our leader product up through the range. This is not a feature that you have to buy in at the top end at Panasonic. This is from a leader 4K all the way through the range. So any consumer can get access to HDR10 product from Panasonic. Yeah? Okay. I think again, let's move on to uh, one more. We'll turn your HDR10 content and almost, if you like, emulate an HDR10 plus in terms of its metadata and improve the, the picture from it. So, of course, it's not going to be as accurate as a true HDR10 plus uh, feed, but this is a way of just improving your overall HDR10 image and emulating up to HDR10 10 plus with it. So, for those customers who have HDR10 product at home and films and so on, they can get a more accurate uh, impression of it. So it's a subtle difference, but nevertheless a difference in the, in the product. And it works based on the brightness. Of course, if you turn the lights on in the house, the TV will adjust the, the contrast of the, of the television.